Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Timmy Treacle, also known as Horror Fan for Life. And in this final video of my top 100 favorite comedies of all time, I will give you numbers 20 through 1. Now, if you've been following along and want to give me your numbers 20 through 1, I would love to see that in the comment section below. And let's have fun with it. <clears throat> uh, other than that, as always, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you like this video, hit this like button. But other than that, let's get right into the final 20 of my favorite comedies of all time. Coming in at number 20 is Grown Ups. Yes, I know I'm probably going to catch some flack from some of you people, but I don't care. <clears throat> to me, Grown Ups is freaking hilarious. It uh, reminds me of myself and uh, some of my friends as we've gotten older and uh, I just have a great time with this movie and yes I will even say I love the sequel as well uh, you know I know these Sandler movies get a lot of hate but that's your guys' prerogative for me Grown Ups is a fun ass movie to watch with a great cast great characters and yeah I love it it's a blast to watch Anytime it's on TV, I'm watching it. And so it comes in at number 20. Number 19 is Groundhog Day. To me, this is one of Bill Murray's best performances and best movies. Um, he, along with uh, um, Chris Elliott, uh, Brian Dole and Murray, you have a funny film. Even Harold Ramis has a small cameo in it, but pretty much uh, Bill Murray's character uh, goes to Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania for Groundhog's Day. He goes to leave, but they get snowed in, and he ends up repeating the day, uh, the same day, over and over again. And it is freaking hilarious. I love, love this movie. And uh, yeah, it comes in at number 19. If you haven't seen Groundhog Day, you're definitely missing out. Get to watching it. Number 18 is my favorite collaboration between uh, Will Ferrell and um, John C. Riley, and that is Step Brothers. Uh, gotta love me and my boats and hoes. Uh, I love this movie. Again, a great cast. The two male leads with Ferrell and... Uh, John C. Riley are terrific. They work well off one another. And uh, I'm really hoping we get a sequel. Don't think it's going to happen. But nevertheless, though, this is a funny-ass movie. You have two um, older adults still living at home with their single parents. They decide to get together. They get married. Uh, they want to move on, retire. And so the guys are forced to get jobs, which is really funny. But nonetheless, though, it's the Catalina freaking wine mixer. All right, Rob Riggle in this movie. It, God, he's so freaking hilarious. He's only in a few scenes, but he is hilarious in this movie. So, yeah, number 18 is Step Brothers. Number 17 is Super Bad. Oh, man. Jonah Hill. I mean, come on. It's uh, uh, Seth Rogen, uh, Bill Hader. I believe is the other is he the other officer in this movie? I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he's the other officer. And <laughs> you, you have a character of McLovin. I mean, what more do you need? This is a great, great movie. You have three young gentlemen who are trying to, for the uh, most of the night, trying to uh, get alcohol, get to this party. And hook up with some girls. And uh, that's the excitement of, uh, of high school. You got boys and girls trying to get together. And this this is just a great movie. Uh, I can't believe it's already, it's going, I think it's 13 years now. But man, what a great movie. This is, this is going to hold up for the longest time. It'll never get old. Uh, so definitely check out Super Bad if you haven't seen it. Coming in at number 16 is Waiting. Waiting is a movie that's very 
special to me, uh, being that I worked in the food service industry uh, for almost 20 years, uh, whether it be management, line cook, chef, whatever the case may be, I, I've worked it. And I had a blast, especially during my years at a restaurant called Steak and Shake. If you uh, know of those, I'm sure you do. Uh, I spent 11 years uh, there working. And I started off as a busboy, worked my way up to management. I had a blast. And waiting reminded me of what we used to do. My very first place, I used to have parties every weekend. And I had a hell of a good time. Uh, met a lot of cool people. Uh, don't see them as much now, being that they're all older and we all have our lives and all that stuff. But still, great times. And uh, Waiting is a funny-ass movie. And it's pretty much what goes on in a restaurant uh, behind the scenes. And one thing I will say is you don't mess with people who handle your food. And that's all I'm going to say. But yeah, number 16 is waiting. Next, we are dropping down to number 15. And at number 15, we have Caddyshack. Caddyshack, to me, is the best uh, sports comedy out there. Uh, even ESPN has acknowledged that it is the funniest and best sports film out there. Uh, Caddyshack, you, it's 1980. You have, uh, sorry about that, my legs get spasms in them. Uh, you have uh, Chevy Chase, Rodney Dangerfield, uh, Bill Murray, Brian Dole Murray. Uh, it's just, it's an amazing, hilarious film about uh, uh, Bushwood Estates. It's a country club, golfing. You have the snotty rich people who, uh, go there to play golf and you have the poor kids who are the caddies and whatnot and it's basically a back and forth between them to, uh, two types of people uh, but my favorite character in the movie is um, played by Rodney Dangerfield uh, even though everybody else is great but I just Rodney Dangerfield is on another level uh, than most people but yeah Caddyshack comes in 15 Number 14 is Stir Crazy. Stir Crazy is a film that starred Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder. And this is one of many collaborations that they did together. Uh, Silver Streak, uh, Stir Crazy, uh, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, amongst others. Uh, they were supposed to be in Blazing Saddles together. Pryor was up for the part of... Um, uh, uh, Cleon Little's part in the movie uh, but they didn't feel that he was right uh, for this movie and they basically couldn't rely on him and so they went with Cleon Little but Richard Pryor was a writer on uh, uh, Blazing Saddles but uh, Stir Crazy uh, is an hilarious movie these two guys decide to go out to California and find a better life for themselves. They get a job at this bank doing promotion in these uh, bird outfits. Uh, while they're on their lunch break, two other guys get in the bird outfits and rob the bank. And basically they are sent to prison for a crime they didn't commit. While they're inside, they try to find a way to prove their innocence. And it's a great movie. And uh, I highly recommend you check out Stir Crazy if you haven't seen it. Coming number 13 is the 40-year-old version. What else does it say? I mean, come on. Steve Carell, Seth Rogen, Paul Rudd. I mean, what else do you want me to say? Uh, it's a funny-ass movie. Great one-liners. And uh, the whole waxing scene with Steve Carell. Oh, my God. I still cringe to this day. Kelly Clarkson! Yeah, I mean, come on. It's a funny-ass movie, and it comes in at number 13. Number 12 is Trading Places. This is a great Christmas comedy. You have uh, Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy, Jamie Lee Curtis, Dom Hall Elliott, uh, amongst others. 
you have Winthorpe, who has a great job, a fian beautiful fiance, and he makes a lot of money. Well, Duke and Duke decide to make a small one dollar bet that they can take uh, Billy Ray Valentine, played by Eddie Murphy, from off the streets and put him in place of Winthorpe, and that he could be just as successful as Winthorpe is at his job. While at the same time putting Winthorpe out on the street in the poorhouse, that's what they do in this movie. And it is a freaking hilarious movie. Still stands up today. And you got a young Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie. And I gotta tell you, she is gorgeous. And yes, there is a um, boob shot in the movie as well. But the the movie is hysterically funny. A lot of great one lines in it. And uh, I highly recommend you check it out, Trading Places. It's a great movie. I watch it at least once a year during the Christmas holiday season. So, yeah, check it out for yourself. Number 11 is Ghostbusters. Who are going to call? Uh, Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, uh, Ernie Hudson, uh, Dan Aykroyd. I mean, come on, call. Uh, you have uh, Rick Moranis, Sigourney Weaver, Annie Potts. Just a phenomenal cast in this movie. And during its time, great special effects for 1984. Uh, I, I love, love this movie. It is a part of my childhood. Yeah, and then the cartoon came along. Then we got a sequel. And... It's just a blast to watch. And I still watch it till this day. It's just, it's a movie that's going to hold up forever. Younger generations that come around are going to love this movie. And yeah, it comes in at number 11. Almost cracked the top 10. But uh, uh, here we go. Uh, coming in at number 10 is American Pie. I love the American Pie franchise. Most notably, the movies that went to theaters, uh, the, the four of those. I do enjoy some of the direct-to-DVD releases. Most notably, The Naked Mile, The Book of Love, and now Girls Rules. I love those three. Uh, the other two direct-to-DVD movies, I, I really didn't care for. Uh, I've only seen them once. Maybe I'll give them another look and see. But I really didn't like those two. My favorite theatrical release one, of course, uh, you got American Pie. Uh, the American Reunion is a close second, and it's the latest one, it was 2012. Can't believe that's eight years old already. Nonetheless, though, American Pie is a classic movie, 1999. It came out almost a year after I graduated from high school. Uh, Jason Biggs. Um, Eddie K. Thomas, uh, Thomas Ian e. Nichols, Chris Klein, Sean William Scott. Ah, just a blast of a movie. Uh, so, yeah, it comes in at number 10. If you haven't seen this movie, you need to. It's a phenomenal movie with great one liners. And yes, there's boobs in the movie, too. Number 9 is National Lampoon's Animal House. 1978, the year I was born. I love this. John Belushi. Um, you have uh, Tim Matheson. Carrot um, uh, Allen in it as well. And it's a funny college comedy movie. Harold Ramis, of course, is involved in this movie as well. You have... Uh, uh, what is the Southern... I uh, can't remember the Sutherland name. Uh, plays uh, the Dean, Dean Warmer in this movie. Uh, but yeah, it's got uh, uh, Donald Sutherland in it. I know that. But nonetheless, though, National Lampoon's Vacation, or not Vacation, National Lampoon's Animal House is a movie that still holds up today. You have the Delta House that just likes to party. And get bad grades, drink, do drugs, and sleep with college girls. That's what they're all about. And uh, it's just, it's a funny movie. I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it. Coming in at number eight 
is Bridesmaids. This to me is the funniest uh, all female led cast comedy. Maya Rudolph, uh, Kristen Wiig. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just a great, great movie with great characters. Uh, the soundtrack is phenomenal. Melissa McCarthy. I mean, come on. Does it get any better than that? I don't think so. But Bridesmaids is number eight. Number seven is The Breakfast Club. My favorite John Hughes movie of all time. Uh, you have a great young cast in it. Uh, with Amelia Estevez, uh, Molly Ringwald, Judd Nelson, uh, Anthony Michael Hall, Ali Sheedy, uh, Paul Gleason as uh, the, the teacher of the movie. And it's just a blast to watch. I love the... Uh, Lions in this movie, they're so quotable. Uh, it's its a great, I would say, coming of age movie too. But nonetheless, though, this movie still holds up today. Is by far, in my opinion, the best John Hughes movie. Some would probably argue Plain Strains and Automobiles, maybe Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Hell, some may even say 16 Candles or Pretty in Pink. We shall see. But for me, it didn't get no better than The Breakfast Club. Number six is Dumb and Dumber. Jim Carrey, Jeff Daniels. That's all that needs to be said. This 1994 comedy has some of the best one-liners in it. Uh, the characters. Uh, it, it's just a, a staple of uh, what was a good decade of comedy in the 90s. This takes the cake, in my opinion, and uh, it is uh, some of the better performances of Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, respectfully, and uh, it just barely misses the top five. Coming in at number five is my favorite Christmas movie of all time, and that is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. If you want to talk about uh, quotable lines in this movie, Chevy Chase has got some of the better ones. Uh, we got Randy Quay. Uh, Merry Christmas. The shitter is full. Uh, come on. Uh, you have Beverly D'Angelo. Uh, of course, Chevy Chase, Randy Quaid. Uh, Brian Dole Murray plays uh, Chase's boss. Uh, and in this movie, Clark invites his whole family to Christmas. And it all goes to hell. Uh, he wants to surprise the family with a, a pool, which uh, he's really hoping to get using his bonus. But there's a, a surprise. I'm not going to spoil it. You should already have seen the movie by now. But I'm not going to spoil what it is. Uh, but then you have uh, Cousin A that pulls up uh, in an RV, basically begging for a place to, uh, to stay through the holidays. And... Uh, it just makes for a great comedy. Cousin Eddie's character in these movies are the best. And in my opinion, in Vegas Vacation, uh, Randy Quaid's performance in the movie is top notch. It's the main reason why I watched that movie. Uh, but yeah, Christmas Vacation comes in at number five. It is a fantastic movie. Uh, so yeah, check it out. Number four? is Blazing Saddles. Great comedy. Mel Brooks, Cleavon Little, uh, Gene Wilder. It's great comedy. Uh, a movie that would never be able to be made today because people are too sensitive and but nothing but a bunch of snowflakes. But other than that, though, Blazing Saddles comes in at number four. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. It is a classic. Number three. Wedding Crashers. I love this movie. The uh, collaboration between Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson as two best buds is phenomenal. But you have uh, Bradley, a young Bradley Cooper. You got Will Ferrell in this movie. Uh, it's just a great uh, Ilsa uh, Fisher. Uh, just a great cast in this movie. And the two main guys are Wedding Crashers. 
and that's what they do. Then they decide to take on a, a wedding that is very high profile with a um, uh, political uh, person played uh, uh, by, uh, oh God, what is his name? Uh, I'm drawing a blank on this. Day. I sh shouldn't be. But if it comes to me, I will, of course, I blurt it out. But Wedding Crashers, my favorite scene in the movie, is when they're all sitting down for dinner and they're talking about their business while at the same time Vince Vaughn is getting uh, basically jerked off underneath the table by Ilsa Fisher's uh, character. And it is freaking hilarious. I love, love that scene. You have uh, some of the greatest one-liners in this movie, uh, funniest performances, and I highly recommend you check out Wedding Crashers if you haven't already seen it. It's number three. Number two is Porky's. In my family, Porky's is the tops when it comes to comedy. This is a sex comedy uh, nonetheless. Bob Clark, who directed uh, the 1974 Black Christmas and um, A Christmas Story, directs this movie, and it is phenomenal. It is a laugh out loud, hilarious movie. And again, this is a movie that couldn't be made today because everybody's so damn sensitive. Uh, but nonetheless, the Porky's, uh, it could turn into a trilogy, which I absolutely love. Some may not really care for the third movie. But I do, I love it, and that's all that really matters. But the original movie is a classic, uh, still holds up today. I highly recommend you check out Porky's if you haven't seen it. And coming in at my number one favorite comedy of all time is The Hangover from 2009. And yes, I have a photo of Zach Galifianakis over there on my wall. I want to take the camera. See if I can take it over that way. You see it there? Yeah, the hangover. And his line, of course. Uh, then I also have uh, one for the Warriors. Of course, The Force Awakens. There's my Wanderers poster uh, as well. But yes, this, the hangover is uh, a great original idea that has never been done before. Four guys go to Vegas for a bachelor party. One of their friends goes missing, Doug. They can't find him, so they try to retrace their steps. Uh, after a night of long partying and drinking and drugs, it's great. Uh, Mike Tyson has a cameo in it, amongst others. you got Heather Graham, uh, Bradley Cooper, Zach Galifianakis, and Helms. It is a funny-ass movie, one that, uh, until something comes along, that just blows me away. This movie will be my number one for a long time coming. And yeah, so Hollywood, let's see what you got. See if you can uh, mark my number one movie out of that spot. But there you have it. That is my top 100 favorite comedies of all time. Of course, I did numbers 20 through 1 in this video. You can find the other vid videos on my channel as well. So definitely check those out. In the comment section below, did you like my list? Did you not agree with it? Uh, which ones did you like? Which ones did you not like? And what is your number one favorite comedy of all time? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever I upload videos to my channel. And if you like this, hit that like button. But thanks for watching. Stay tuned for much more movie reviews, TV show reviews, trailer reviews, top tens, and rankings. Thank you again for watching, and check you later.